hello guys welcome back to the next video where we are going to solve question number 34 from the CBSE question sample paper 2024 for accountancy if you have missed out the previous videos do check them out from the entire playlist which is given in the description box below the link to the paper is given there as well if you don't want to miss out the future videos then you have to click on subscribe button and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever a new video is shared without further ado let's get started this is the last sum in this series where we have a cash flow sum given to us we are required to prepare the entire cash flow statement based on the information which is given to us let's start from the beginning and we will pick up the item one by one as we go along and put them in the cash flow wherever they are supposed to sit okay that saves time because you don't have to come back to the item again and again like the first one we have share capital we have an increase in the value of share capital right and though it says note number one however the note number one belongs to reserve so there is no note given for share capital straight away this is an increase in the value of share capital where we go to the financing activities we have this item proceeds from issue of shares so that becomes a positive two lakhs for us all right next one that we have is reserves and surplus we have 6 lakh 40 minus 5 lakh 40 however we have a note here we have general reserve which has increased by 70,000 5 lakh it is now and previously it was 4 lakh 30 so 70,000 it has increased by and we all know it comes here add transfer to reserves in the capital in the calculation of net profit before tax so 70,000 comes here okay then the next item that we have here is capital reserve and then we have surplus that is the balance in statement of profit and loss which is an increase of profit during the year of 20,000 right 80 minus 60 so that comes here all right so as of now we have 90,000 as our net profit before tax however let's do it one by one let's move on to the next item that we have we have next long-term borrowings okay and as you can see here it has also increased by 50,000 that means new debentures are issued worth 50,000 okay so that comes that brings us to the financing activity proceeds from issue of debentures this is a positive 50,000 that we write here all right now when we are doing this we can take care of the interest at this moment itself now we have a 10 percent interest on debentures and we have to understand on which figure do we calculate let's move down to the question as you can see here additional debentures were issued on 31st march 23 the dates are given wherever you see dates they are for the purpose of interest calculation now if the additional debentures are issued on 31st march 23 which is end of the year that means on the additional debentures no interest to be paid so 10 percent interest will be paid on rupees 1 lakh right so interest paid on debentures 10 percent of 1 lakh is 10,000 so that's a negative amount it's an outflow so this will be putting in brackets all right and don't forget this will have another entry if you go up here interest on debentures this is a non-operating item so this gets added here so 10,000 we write here all right so complete the adjustments as you go along so that you don't miss out on anything and everything is at the proper place now the next item current liabilities that we have trade payables we have a note number three let's see do we have anything no we don't have 30,000 and 12,000 so trade payables have increased right so where does it come increase in trade payable this is part of working capital changes and if you come here we have the adjustment which is talking about add decrease in current assets and increase in current liabilities and we have the other one increase in current assets and decrease in current liabilities which is subtracted so increase in trade payables comes here straight away 30,000 minus 
twelve thousand. Okay, so eighteen thousand we write here. This will be added. Let's move on to the next one. Short term provisions we have thirty thousand and twenty eight thousand. We have a note here. Short term provisions thirty thousand and twenty eight thousand. However, whenever you do short term provisions, you have to go to the additional information and check whether they have provided any other information. If they have provided, then you have to prepare the short term provisions. It's a must. If they haven't provided, then straight away the previous year's short term provision becomes current year's tax paid, and this one current year's provision goes to the calculation of net profit before tax. It is added here. However, since we have an information given here, tax provided during the year is seventeen thousand, we will have to prepare the provision for taxation account, provision for tax account. All right, and these are the four items that always come in this account. So let's put the values. Twenty-eight thousand is the opening balance. Always remember, provision for tax is a liability. So by balance BD comes on the credit side, and we have the closing balance given to us thirty thousand. Tax provided during the year is given to us seventeen thousand. So it will sit here on the credit side. This amount is given to us. So straight away we can calculate how much is the tax paid during the year, which is straight away forty-five thousand minus thirty thousand. Okay, fifteen thousand is the tax paid during the year. So we have to understand this amount goes into the NBT calculation, the provision made during the year seventeen thousand. Let's go up here. Provision for tax for the current year seventeen thousand. Okay, and the tax paid during the year fifteen thousand. This goes into your operating activities less tax paid. This will be seventeen. This will be fifteen thousand within brackets. All right. So our provision adjustment is done as well. Let's move on to the next item to our balance sheet. We were here trade payables, short term provisions done. Moving on to the asset side now. We have non current assets. We have property, plant, and equipment and intangible assets. Under that, we have a note given to us and we have some non current assets. Let's go down. What do we have? Under tangible assets, we have plant and machinery. We have the opening and the closing balance. Again, let's go down and see. If there is any additional information given to us, we have note number two. We have depreciation given to us for the year one lakh twenty thousand. So again, when you have additional information, it's required you prepare the account, the respective asset account. So here we get four lakh ninety thousand as the opening balance. Again, this is an asset. Opening balance will be on the debit side, and seven lakh seventy five thousand comes as my balance CD, right? Depreciation is given to us, so we will put that on the credit side by depreciation account. One lakh twenty thousand straightforward it is given, right? So the balance that we get on the debit side that is nothing but to bank account, which is the purchase of the asset plant and machinery during the year, right? So this comes out as a balancing figure. And that will be straight away eight lakh ninety five thousand. The total minus four lakh ninety thousand, which is four lakh five thousand. Okay. So now these two items that we have, depreciation and bank, they will go to their respective places. Depreciation will go to your operating activities here, where we add your adjustments for non cash item. Depreciation is a non cash item. It sits here, and the purchase of plant and machinery, which is an investing activity, purchase of plant and machinery, it will sit here. It's an outflow, four lakh five thousand, will sit here as a negative amount. All right, so we are done with plant and machinery. Let's move on to the next item. Then we have non-current investments. Let's see if we have any information given about that. We see here we have a note number three. Note number three says non-current investments costing thirty thousand were sold for forty thousand during the year. 
and the gain on sale of investments was credited to capital reserve all right so we have to prepare the non current investments account as well let's let's put the balance here we have the opening balance as 50000 and we have the closing balance for investments as 90000 okay then if i come down here investments were sold for 40000 that means by bank account sale that's 40000 all right and we have made a profit right it is sold at a profit so that goes to your profit on investments however as per the question if you see that's transferred to created to capital reserve account so we write it as capital reserve account right so 10,000 goes here right now let's find the difference of both the sides so if you see here we have 130,000 as the total on this side and here we have just 60,000 so the difference that comes is again we have it on the debit side that means it's a purchase of investments so to bank account and that's a purchase okay 70,000 so that goes to investing activities the sale of investment also goes to investing activity however the profit on sale of investment ideally generally in normal cases it goes to your operating activities and we subtract the profit on sale of assets however since this is transferred this is capitalized to capital reserve it was never transferred to PL account so it is not subtracted from there you have to understand this is a simple concept understanding if you keep that in mind you will be able to do it flawlessly in the exam all right proceeds from sale of investments we have 40,000 and purchase of investments we have a negative 70,000 it's an outflow right so that completes our investments adjustments let's move on after investments we have inventory and as you can see here the inventory amount has increased increase in current assets is subtracted in your calculation of working capital changes so it comes under this category so let's do that so you get it as 4 lakh 13,000 minus 6 lakhs 20,000 all right so you get 2 lakh 7,000 as your inventory this will be subtracted so let's have it as a negative figure inventory is done let's move on to trade receivables and that has decreased it has decreased so it will be added so let's come here we have 4 lakh 94 thousand minus 3 lakh 20 thousand all right 1 lakh 74 thousand that's done coming to cash and cash equivalents we have the opening and the closing one the opening one we put it here at the end add opening cash and cash equivalents we write 33,000 here and the final answer that we get here this should tally with the closing one that we have the 45,000 okay let's see did we miss out on anything general reserve we have taken capital reserve we have taken surplus done depreciation done provisions done plant and machinery also we have done debentures point number three point number one also we have taken into consideration let's do our calculation let's put this in nbt figure of one lakh seven thousand at the beginning of the cash flow one lakh seven thousand okay then we add this two to our final answer and we get here is two lakh thirty seven thousand and then we add this two and subtract this one to see what do we get so 2,37,000 plus 1,92,000 
and this is already negative figure so plus this amount 222000 less tax paid so if i do this this is already negative figure so 207000 is my cash flow from operating activities okay let's move on we have completed our investing activities as well there is nothing else so let's sum this up what do we get we get 4 lakh a negative 4 lakh 35000 all right and let's come to our financing activities let's sum this up as well we get a positive of 2 lakh 40000 okay so net increase and decrease in cash and cash and cash equivalents will be a sum of all these three all right that comes to 12000 and if i add these two it's coming to 45000 which is tallying with my closing cash and cash equivalents that means our cash flow tallied this is how you have to do it be very careful do it step by step the way i did it is helpful however that requires a lot of practice if you have practiced a lot then you should be able to do it otherwise you have to do it the convention way where you pick up one item you start from the beginning and a lot of things are there to be kept in mind okay this will be helpful to you guys if you follow and practice a lot hope this was helpful if this was helpful hit the like button and share with your friends who can get benefit out of it stay tuned for more videos on this channel we'll be preparing more videos on at a concept level to help you understand the concepts and make things easy for you in the exam thanks for watching